Hey guys, so welcome to another episode. Uh, today, we're gonna go work through with Sydney and go through a lot of her training today. So I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, we actually recorded this after the fact, so what you'll see me do is I'll talk to Sydney and just to break down that further, we spoke a lot about our snatch technique. The fortunate thing about separating or being away from an athlete for some duration, it allows you to have fresh eyes when you see them. And fortunately, speaking to Dwight as well and Nick, uh, where I saw an opportunity to speak to Sydney was regarding her snatch and the technique. The big things that we spoke about there were just the timing uh, of, of her hands, uh, her second pull particularly, you can see that on the blocks, to isolate the movement and then focus on that particular area which we were focused on. Now Dwight brought it to my attention that she's her timing and her sequence in her snatch in that phase wasn't correct so she, he just wanted someone else to speak to her as well. So fortunately I had a good conversation told her to at, relax the arms, you know, have the noodle arms, and then don't react until the hip contacts the bar or puts, uh, you apply the leg force into the barbell. Uh, we, so we had a great chat around that. We played around with different drills as well. Now, I don't expect her to take on that and, and improve immediately. I know this takes time. I mean, look at all the weightlifters around the world. They're still doing progression drills, right? So we see the importance of applying us, I mean, applying drills like this throughout the season. Uh, to help put things in context as well. I would say with an athlete of Sydney's caliber where she's really trying to progress or where there's a lot of uh, a learning curve to be had, we would apply drills two to three times like this throughout her training volume. And for someone like Tia, for instance, we would do maybe one or two of these and it would be a shorter window of training progressions. Uh, and that's where we're at with Sid. So we see a lot of value in this. And like I spoke to Sid as well, like if we can concentrate or if we can make this movement more explosive using the legs, it's gonna allow our arms to be a lot more fresh when we start coupling it with a handstand walk or anything shoulder dominated. So we're really trying to utilize our, our larger muscle groups essentially, like our legs, our force, and uh, minimize our upper body. You know, And a big thing we spoke about as well, like even all the weightlifting coaches, a big, uh, the power comes from the legs and, and if you think about all the all the weightlifting coaches when they're trying to assess what you're capable of we always refer to our back squats our front squats and our deadlifts never do we ask what your upright row is and that's that shows the importance of where the power should be coming from <laughs> talked about pacing strategies because a lot because Sydney likes to go hard and sometimes she has a little bit of street in her where she likes to kind of go out a little too fast and then it kind of starts to break off a little bit more so I actually took the clock out of it and had the clock for myself and then just wanted to log down the note of exactly how fast she did on each round and I told her to go by a complete feel and see what um, she could actually hit in terms of the pace on every single round and trying to make it as even as possible without looking at the clock. And she was able to do that all the way through. She even had just a minor around there where it went a little bit slower, but that was the chalk up and that was a strategic pacing strategy for her to chalk up so that she could hang on to the bar for the later rounds. Um, and that's what I really like to see from that workout. Um, so how's your vacation? Ah, uh, okay. So my vacation was really good. Last week I went to California for my son's second birthday party, Sawyer. Um, all my family and Julia's family is out there in California. So what we did was we just wanted to go out there. We haven't been to California in about two and a half years or so. We actually went out there last time for the baby shower. So it was kind of cool for everybody to see Sawyer, have some fun. The weather was amazing. It was 65 and sunny every single day. Went to the beach, uh, went to the zoo, saw some animals, and it was a lot of fun to get away for a little bit um, and have some family time. Up. 
So as Patty said, the double squat, which is a one and a quarter front squat, the main focus is getting out of the hole in terms of a squat clean to get that more dynamic. So most people, if you were to kind of think about what a max should be in terms of your one and a quarter front squat, it's actually gonna be similar to your squat clean max. And so we were working on more dynamic speed today and actually we're gonna be heavier tomorrow with our back squat. So I didn't want a lot of volume there, but I wanted to tap into a little bit more form and speed with that, with those elbows up for our squat cleans. Um, similar to what we did with Brooke to kind of counter okay. the answers to kind of see where you go. Um, it is definitely a cold day in Nashville. You've been here for a year and a half with Brooke. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know it was this cold in Nashville when you moved here? <laughs> I mean, kind of, because I came from Memphis. Oh, so that's it's like true. three hours away. So. Was it similar to this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think Memphis is a little bit more humid though. Yeah, coming from Boulder, I kind of expected it to be a lot nicer here. And, uh -huh. uh, it's, been, it's been almost just as cold. So. <laughs> um, so question, what is your favorite crumble cookie of all time? Um, probably the churro. The churro flavor. Yeah, it's possible. like cinnamon sugar and then on top, the icing is just so good. What's the icing? I, I think it's just cinnamon. Cinnamon icing. But I do like the cream cheese icing the best on like the funfetti and stuff. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm always like the chocolate chip guy. So The just, plain chocolate chip? I just love plain chocolate chip every single time. Oh my gosh. Or the M&M's. That That's probably so like your least favorite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm super basic. Like, let's leave that one out. Yeah. Um, perfect. So, um, Brooke just got a puppy, but it's kind of your puppy too. Mm -hmm. Have you guys talked about if you were to move out? What would it, like? Well, because she's definitely gonna get it. She yeah, said it's her dog, sure. but would it make you pretty sad about? It? it would be really sad, but he's a lot to handle. I dog sit it sat. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> Last weekend, and like he woke me up at like six forty-five every morning, and I was like, Brooke, do you understand that like I get no sleep with Oliver, and she's like Sydney, he sleeps with me every night. <laughs> like, okay, that's. Fair. Well, because I was wondering that because a lot of times when people get a dog and they have a roommate. It ends up being actually like just as much as your mate's dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but she, she does take a lot she more takes responsibility. More. Cool. Right on. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the gym, who do you think is the person that gives you the most shit? Well, well, 100%. I don't think anyone would say any other answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is like definitely the consensus of the person that will give the most crap. So. Yeah. Um, and who ends up taking the most pee breaks before workouts? I mean, I think me and Brooke are pretty much the same, but. I think we caught you guys both today going at the exact Yeah. Time. Yeah. I mean, the, like, yeah, I take a lot of pee breaks. Yeah. And um, who's the bigger diva, you or Brooke? Brooke. Brooke? She cares a lot more about, a lot more than I do. So you tell she's high maintenance? Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, and coming into the season this year, uh -huh. um, have you kind of been watching competitions and getting a little fire underneath you and For like sure. wanting to get out there a little bit? Yeah, definitely watching Water Blues. Uh, I'm really motivated. Yeah, definitely wanted to get down there. Mm-hmm. Cool. Who I is and who I be, they stop and stare when they see me. If I said it once, no need to repeat. Run up on me, watch you fall to your knees. Tip my hat when it's time for the kill. Ain't no beast when you're really real. I am the boss, I am the dawn, I am the one they call Lucky Charm. Got my own shit, I don't need your farm. Life was so hard, it made me weak. Built to last, this girl ain't weak. Sturdy and still when I plant my feet. Got it out the melon, now it's racks in my sleep. Look to God, he supplies my needs. Endless faith is what brought me. Next level prosperity. Silent power moves is what I'm giving. They love to hate the world, they can't live in. Always present for the high roads, go swim within the deep lows, lows. Like, subscribe, put all that good stuff in there. We appreciate that. Please leave a comment if you want to see more of this as well. We great, had great traction, great, uh, great feedback on the last one. Hence why Pat brought me back for this one. Uh, please do something nice.